Hello everyone, uh, welcome again to Hybrid Accounts. And uh, we're just going to try and take a look on how to use the article method on value and closing inventory. So here the question, HC traders have incurred the following transactions. Uh, 1st January, purchase raw material. We are told, inform given information on 2nd January, 10th January, 18th May, 30th August, as well as 1st November. Now we are required to calculate the quantity and value of inventory on 31st December 26 using both FIFA and AVCO. Don't worry. In our case, we just use AVCO. As for FIFA, we did it in the previous video. So you can just go back to the previous video to take a look on how to AVCO is performed. So I'll just go directly on the FIFA on the AVCO method here. This one is the solution here. So this is what we do now. As for the Avico methods, whenever you obtain inventory, whenever, whenever you receive inventory, you need to recompute the average cost because the meaning of Avico means average, weighted average method. So since it's a weighted average method, you can purchase inventory at, di at different cost per unit. So what you do is you should always determine the average inventory whenever there is a new receipt. So that when there is an issue of inventory, you use that average cost. So let's start. All right. Uh, in the question, uh, sorry, sorry. I think I skipped. In the question, you usually have you could use you could have open inventory, but for our question, there was no open inventory. So if you had open inventory, you'd have put it. But the information started from first January. So on first January 26, purchase raw material. 500 units at 4,000, right? This cost is given in total. Sometimes we are given on a per unit basis. So 500 units at 4,000. So here is what I'm just going to do here. On 1st January, the date, remember, just like for the people, you have to start with the date, you come to receipts, and then we'd have issues, and then we'd have the balance, right? And for each, you would have the quantity of, of inventory, the rate that is the price amount. I've just written in currency at TZS, but this is, this is simply the amount. And then, then quantity rate amount, quantity rate amount, quantity price amount. This is what you should always have in place, right? All right, so you start on 1st January, purchases were made, that means the receipts. How much? We purchased 500 units. For a total of 4,000, meaning that uh, each unit was purchased for 4,000 divided by 500, that is 8, right? So this is the, this is the purchases that we received. No issues were made. So uh, since I have no opening inventory, this is, will only be the amount available, will only be the balance. In case you had opening inventory, we were supposed to determine the average right away. But that was not the case. So I'll just proceed now. So I just come up here and uh, I just come to 2nd January. On 2nd January, 26, purchase raw material, 200 units for a total of 2,000, right? So I just go there, 200 units for a total of 2,000. Here I am. 2nd January, I made purchases, 200 units here for a total of 2,000, meaning that 2,000 divided by 200 equals to 10. So it will turn to the DS per unit. So now you ask yourself, contract the fee for here, we, we have two consignments of inventory with different costs per unit. The first one had eight per unit and the second had 10 per unit. So I have to, I have to determine the average. So you put them together, you copy the up, the up one, that was 500 at eight per unit, giving you a total of 4,000. And down here, we have 200 units, at 10 per unit at for a total of 2,000, right? So as opposed to FIFO that we are just copying, here we need to determine the average cost. So how do I get the average cost? 500 plus 200, I have 700 units in total. 4,000 plus 2,000, I have 6,000 units in total. So how do I get the rate, the price? You just take the total, uh, total cost, that is 6,000, divided by the total quantity, 700. 6,000 over 700, I'll, I'll obtain 8.57. That's what I'm going to do. 
All right. Yeah, so that's what you should do. So I hope you know how we obtain this 8.57. I just divided 6,000 over 700. Yeah. 6,000 over 700, I obtained 8.57. So you should always do something like this when dealing with average price, with an average method. And then you can proceed. You have 8.57. So whenever I issue material, when as long as I haven't received any, I would have to issue them at this price of 8.57 instead of 8 or 10. All right, let's just go back to the question and take a look at the next date. The next date is 10th January. 10th January 26 issued 400 units for production. So 400 units were issued for production. So I just have to go and take a look at this all right so here you are ah, this is 10th january i made an issue now no receipt right now that's why you see on the receipt, receipt columns are empty and then i'll go to issue i issued 400 units now as i told you unlike c4 i cannot say ah i started with eight and, and use the cost of eight first no I'll just say that, oh, the average cost is 8.57. So just write the cost per unit is 8.57. That's why we call it the average method. We use the average unit cost. You multiply them and you would have 3429, right? And this is just a matter of estimation. Eh? So you have to, because uh, remember, we, we estimated. So if you just estimate, you would obtain this figure here. And then you ask yourself, I had 700 units but I have issued 400. So I'm left with only 300 units at the same cost that is 8.57. You multiply those ones and this is what we're just going to obtain. Now just be careful here. The sum of these two costs, that the 429 as well as 25.71 should give you 6,000, right? Yeah, so uh, you can just proceed now. Um, 18th May. 18th May 26, purchased raw materials, 300 units for 6,000. So this is the additional purchase, another receipt. So as I told you, whenever you receive something new, you will incur the new different cost, then you'll need to determine the new average cost. So 300 units for 6,000. So we just proceed here. 300 units for 6,000. This one, 18th May. Purchase 300 units for a total of 6,000, right? Actually, the cost per unit was 20. Of course, when dealing with this, there is no much need to determine this cost per unit here. No need, but I just wrote it, but it's not, need. so it's not needed. So what do I do? First of all, I copy what I had in place for the original one. It's not a must to copy. You can just add directly, but uh, I like it. I like you uh, to be more precise. So just copy it. 300, 8.57, 21, 71, 25, 71, this one. And then you copy the new one, 300 units at 20 per unit, giving you a total of 6,000. 300 units at 20 per unit, giving you a total of 6,000. And then since I have two different consignments, probably three because this one actually we had something here, but it will not matter about that. When speaking of the average, you combine it. So you combine them again to obtain the new average cost. 300 plus 300, I have 600 units in about the total cost. 2571 plus 6,000, I would have 8571. After having obtained this, I would have to determine the average cost. So 8571 divided by 600, I would have 1429 here. So this is the new average cost. So whenever I make an issue, I would have to issue at this price, right? All right, then you proceed. You proceed with the question here. We are told, here we are told that 30 August 26, purchase the raw material, 200 units for 3,500, all right? So you have to add that up. It's another, it's another, another purchase, so I, I need to put it first to obtain the cost per unit. 
on average. So on 30th, 30th August, purchase 200 units for a total of 3,500. Then all you do, all you can do is just copy. So you can just copy this figure here, 600, 14.29, I just copied it there. Then I added, I, I received 200 units at a cost of 3,500. 200 units I received, 200 units at a total cost of 3,500, just like that. Then you can proceed. Now you have not one thing here. Whenever purchases come together, if purchases just follow each other, you know, there is no need to determine the average cost whenever you purchase. You can just combine them. Because, uh, for example, in our case here, I purchased and then I purchased. There was no need to add them one by one. I could have just accumulated them and do them together. But don't worry. I just need us to go in a one precise way. So let's proceed this way. 600 plus 200, I will have 800 here. And the total cost, 8571 plus 8500, I will have 12,071. Then I will obtain the average cost. I take total cost, that is 12,071, divided by 800, and I will have 15.09. Yeah, just like this. And then we can finish up with the last line. The last line is here. On 1st November 26, issued raw materials at 350 units. So that's what we do. I'm just going down there and issue those units. Here. On 1st November, I issued how much? 350 units. That's what I issued, 350 units. If you issue, I just issued, so you have to issue them at the average cost, that was 15.09. So I issued them at 15.09 per unit. If you multiply this one, 350 times 15.09, you obtain the total cost of 52.82. And now remember, you had 800 units, but you have issued 350. So if you minus, you remain with 450 units, 800 minus 350. At the same average cost, that was 15.09. Then 450 times 15.09 would remain with 67.89. As I told you, this uh, balance here plus what uh, was issued actually should give you the same cost. Around the same. So, for example, if you take this one plus this one, maybe some, yeah, you, you have to obtain 12,071. All right, now, if you need to obtain the closing inventory, I think it's easy. We'll see that uh, the closing inventory has 450 units at a cost of 67.89. So closing inventory is at the first December 26, will be 450 units at 15.09 per unit, each gi giving a total of 67.89. This is what uh, would be the case. So this is how we deal with average methods. But now listen, when speaking of the average method, we usually use a continuous way. But let me ask one thing. Suppose we are told to use the periodic method that uh, no need to determine the average cost right away. Whenever, whenever you receive something, maybe you are told to determine it after the end of the period. If you are told to determine at the end of the period, this means you, you wouldn't need to go around this one. And that is obvious. That's why it is usually not asked in the exam. But in case you have not one thing here, this was asked for continuous, right? Continuous method. Let's say you are using the weighted average, but not continuous, maybe on a periodic basis, maybe after one year. In that case, we would have just done this. Total cost over total units. Then we just determine the total cost. Total cost for purchases whenever you purchase because we didn't open with any inventory. So what what would be the total cost? The total cost would be determined this way. I would I would just come here and look. I purchased 500 units for 4,000. This is the total. Then 200 units for 2,000. Total again for 4,000 plus 2,000 is 6,000. 500 plus 200 is 700. So you proceed. 
Here I issued, so nothing. Here I purchased again. You go whenever you purchase. 300 units for 6,000 and 200 units for 3,500. This was just the issue, so no, no nothing on cost. So this is what you would have done until uh, you reach the final point. So this is what you see here. If we just take a look at this, you would find something. Total cost, 500 times 8. Actually, it was given to 4,000. The here it was 2,000. I just decided to assume that we are given the cost per unit. But from the question, it's obvious. Here we had 6,000. And here we had 3,500. You obtain a total of 15,500. You could have just added them. And then you take the total units of purchase, 500 plus 200 plus 300 plus 200, and you'd have 1,200 units. Then you just divide to obtain the average cost per unit, 15,500 divided by 1,200, and you obtain 12.92 TZS per unit. So to obtain the closing inventory, it just becomes easier. We know that closing inventory is 450 units. That means all units purchased minus units remaining in closing inventory. In case of opening inventory, I would have added it. So uh, closing inventory is 450 units multiplied by the cost per unit, which is 12.92. You would obtain 5,814. So this is how we deal with the weighted average method of value inventory, but this one is the common one. You should, you should be very conversant with this continuous method, right? Rather than that periodic one. So thank you very much. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, you can do it right now. And then until next time.